Jesus said, Man cannot live on bread alone, but from every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You're listening to Daily Truth. Well, one of the problems going on that the Apostle Paul is addressing is wrong kinds of judgment between brother and brother, sister and sister, in the house of God, judging one another for the wrong things and with the wrong heart posture making wrong, objectively wrong judgment calls, and making these wrong judgment calls with wrong hearts. One of the things in particular that the church was quarreling and bickering about is in regards to whether or not it was permissible or even holy for Christians to partake of meat sacrificed to idols and wine. Now the Bible teaches in the Psalms that God made grass for the cattle, bread to strengthen the stomach of man, and wine for the gladness of his heart. God did not make Welch's grape juice for the gladness of our hearts. Welch's grape juice makes my little girls glad, but that's because they're four, three, and one years old. By the time you become an adult, grape juice does not have the heart gladdening effects that it once did. We require wine for that. So wine is not inherently wrong. Wine is something that the Lord has made, and it is good. It is good. And for the record, for anybody who wants to twist my words at this point and say, what about marijuana, pastor? That's natural, too. The earth produced that. Didn't God say in Genesis, every green plant that we can eat? Yeah, God said that. My position on marijuana, I've done some teaching on this in the past. You can look it up uh, with Right Response Ministries if you want a longer explanation. But I would say this. I I think that there are many things that God produces in creation, natural things, that again are good. They are not inherently evil in and of themselves. But everything has a purpose. Everything has a purpose. The Bible, if we're thinking of a regulative principle of worship, And worship, not just on the Lord's Day, gathered worship of the saints, Lord's Day worship, but worship as the entirety of our Christian lives. The Bible regulates how we worship, and for the Christian, all of life is worship, so the Bible regulates how we live. The normative principle of worship, just for the record, is the idea that anything the Bible doesn't forbid is on the table, free game. The regular principle of worship says that we should only do that which is prescribed, in scripture. It's significant that the scripture in the psalm said that God, not only that he made wine and therefore it's permissible, but it tells us the purpose. God made wine for the gladness of man's heart. So wine at a wedding to celebrate momentous events that should be happy, gladdening events is not only permissible, but is holy. We can do this, whether you eat or drink, do it all to the glory of God. We can do this in a way that that not only somehow does not anger God, but it actually pleases the Lord when done responsibly and when done in faith. God gave wine for the gladness of man's heart. The Bible does not teach that God made marijuana for the gladness of man's heart. But he did make it. He did make it. And so, for there to be some purposes... Right? I think of pain in terms of medical use. And I'm not talking about the medical use where a perfectly healthy 23-year-old single guy goes in and says, I get headaches, and then his doctor in California gives him a prescription for marijuana. I think that it has been massively overused. But if we're talking about somebody who got hit by a truck and is paralyzed from the waist down and in chronic pain for the rest of their lives, I don't think that the church's position should be Don't you dare give them marijuana. Oh, so you're going to give them oxycodone? Right? Like that doesn't have side effects. That's a heck of a drug. Right? There are other drugs that are far more addicting and have far more reaching side effects than marijuana. So I am pro-marijuana in medical use only. Good rule of thumb, if you're a single man and your back hurts, get a job. Okay, not, not a prescription for marijuana. 
But I do think that there can be some holy purposes. So that's for the devil's advocate who heard me talk about wine being holy. and Well, marijuana is holy too. Now, yeah, with, with some healthy biblical disclaimers. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. Thanks for sticking around. I've got an important announcement to make. That's the Theonomy and Postmillennialism Conference 2023. May 5th, 6th, and 7th, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, Theonomy and Postmillennialism. We've got the speakers that we've already had lined up. That's Dr. James White, Dr. Joseph Boot, Dr. Gary DeMar, non-doctor Pastor Joel Webin. But we also have a bonus speaker, and that is Dale Partridge from Real Christianity. Perhaps you've heard of him. If not, you should start listening to his podcast. It's fantastic. Dale Partridge is going to be joining our team. We're going to have live panels on Friday night and Saturday night where you'll be able to write in questions and get them answered. We're also going to have a catered barbecue Texas-style barbecue meal on Friday that's a part of your registration fee. All that is covered. So you need to get that. This is how you do it. Go and register right now at rightresponseconference.com. Again, that's rightresponseconference.com. God bless.